Hi, so I want to try to address a little bit this not so uncommon experience of having a deepening devotional or supreme release yoga practice and then emerging out of that practice and feeling a sense of being annoyed with or rejecting or being disconnected from your partner. So in your practice, you're feeling blissful and softening and open and love is blossoming and you are blossoming and you're connected to nature and yourself and the divine and your body feels good. <clears throat> and then you walk out of the space where you're doing your practices, you see your partner and you feel, Ugh! or you're just short with them, bickering easily, that kind of a thing. This happens fairly frequently and before I talk about some of the reasons why it may be happening, I do want to address one possibility that is maybe the least likely, but I have to just say it. If there is a problem in the partnership, like this isn't the partner for you, and I'm definitely not saying that about anyone in particular, and you are awakening or becoming aware of that, um, then that disconnection or the ending of the relationship may be revealing itself. If the partner is actually a dharmic, if there is a, uh, a, a abuse in the relationship, or it's just really not a fit, or you've outgrown each other and there's no hope to grow back together, then it's possible that deepening your practices, meaning deepening your maturation process, uh, relative to the other person is speeding the end of the relationship for you know to happen faster or you are becoming aware of problems in the relationship that um you know maybe you would have become aware of later or having um awareness of things or letting yourself see things that you weren't seeing before so that is certainly a possibility and so i don't want to just brush that aside however if that's not the case let's say it's a loving relationship this is the right fit for you your partner is dharmic it is a healthy relationship, then what's happening? Here it might be even more disconcerting because you can say, well, this is such a loving, kind person and I really do love this person and it is a good fit and yet I'm having this yuck feeling or this rejection feeling or I'm just being bickering or reactive and I don't know why. It doesn't make any logical sense. <clears throat> then what's happening? So. A couple things. One is that there may be currently, and this is just a phase, a split between how you feel in your practices and how you feel in the rest of your life. So there's not really a merging between the who you are in your softening, opening practices and who you are the rest of the time. And so when you step over that threshold from one seeming world into the other seeming world, the feeling of annoyance or rejection may be a feeling of annoyance or rejection of how you feel as a different person. The difference between how blissful you were um, in your practice versus how who you become when you step over that threshold into the normal you or the old you. And we tend to take that out on our partner, the person that's the closest to us, perhaps who we live with or the most intimate um, relationship. We might also do that with parents or um, children or other people who are close to us. And it's very disconcerting because it's such a split. And so that has to do with your uh, reaction to the contracting that happens relative to the opening that's happening in your practices. So you step over that threshold and you quickly contract into the old you, okay? And then you feel unhappy about that contraction and you feel like you're getting sucked into something, to an old pattern, an old script with other people, an old script with yourself, and that is actually what you are annoyed with. And you take it out on the world. What to do about that is patience, acknowledging that maybe that's what's happening, letting your partner or whomever it is in your household or life, those intimate relationships, just letting them know that you're going through some healing and transformation. And it's kind of just making you act a little 
you know, unkind in the world or <clears throat> annoyed or whatever it is. And just be patient with yourself. Ask them to be patient with you. Kind of maybe ask them to give you a little space when you emerge out of your practice, if it's possible um, to have sort of a transition. Ultimately, we want to do things like deepen our study of Bhagavad Gita, deepen our understanding of what is Ishwara and things like that so that we ultimately get to a place where there isn't a threshold that you're crossing. You are the same person. But this is a very common stage and it's really good to acknowledge it um, and just be aware of it and work with it so that you don't deepen the divide, the split there, and so that you feel blissful when you're doing your practices and angry and annoyed and unhappy when you're doing the rest of your life. And then you think you have to balance your life and your practice instead of really merging the whole yogic experience. This is really one of the primary reasons why I started teaching more of the philosophy to help people that were doing asana practices to uh, close that divide or merge who they are uh, as a whole person all the time. The other thing that can be happening is, which is related, is that as things are changing at the level of your subtle body, and that's particularly through your heart and your pelvis, which includes the sacral region, the tailbone region, into and through your pubococcygeal muscles, as those particular areas start undergoing transformation and healing, how you relate in relationships will change. And what I mean by that is not just externally how you relate, but internally how you're relating and your motivation for how you relate will change. And in that process, you might be in a gap period where you sort of don't know how to act. So what I mean by that is that you may have a pattern in your relationships, a default of um, being kind or sweet or loving that's actually not coming from a completely authentic, kind, sweet, loving place. Um, it may be partly a kind of a flirt response of the nervous system or a people pleasing response or a kind of an insecurity. And so as the insecurity starts to heal, as the past trauma, if there's past trauma starts to heal, um, as all of those factors, which are kind of holding us down and keeping us blocked and, um, all of that, those start to heal and shift, then the reasons for our kind, loving, sweet, flirtatious, romantic behavior is gone. And we're left with none of those kinds of actions anymore. So we have to kind of let that healing process continue. And then your kindness and love and sweet, romantic, uh, behaviors and helping behaviors will come actually from a more authentic place, free from the kind of uh, disturbance and trauma uh, and self-protection um, that was driving those behaviors before. This actually will happen with sexuality as well. And I'll save that maybe for another <laughs> video or conversation. Um, so there's that. The other thing is, as we're peeling away layers, um, we might reveal things like anger, frustration, feelings of disconnection that are there as part of the makeup of the subtle body and the psychology uh, due to karma and ancestral patterns in our life and our minds and all of that. So as we're peeling away layers that are kind of covering up some of those sort of poisons, so to speak, that we are ashamed of, then those poisons get revealed. And of course, we feel most safe and comfortable in our closest, most intimate relationships. And so we sort of let the demons out, the asura out uh, in those relationships. So these are some of the things that might be behind what's happening. It is 
a phase. And when you get through it, you'll find that if that relationship is, you know, solid and healthy and so on, that the relationship will actually deepen and how you're able to be in relationship will be so much richer, so much more satisfying, so much more authentic, so much happier. So I hope this is helpful. There are probably lots of other reasons that could be named. Um, maybe you'll be able to think of more and others as well. Um, and each of us, these processes are patterned and shared, but also unique. So I do hope that this is helpful. Take care.